What's up guys, Rick from DFS On Demand here with a preview for the PGA Championship. Before we jump into that quick programming note, remember all the videos that you see on this YouTube channel are now available in podcast form. Uh, they're in the iTunes store. I went and saw it myself. Uh, it's available on Spotify and it'll be coming to other platforms as I continue to roll them out. So please um, search DFS On Demand in iTunes or Spotify subscribe so that you can listen to these videos on the go all right other than that i will also be on pat mayo's show uh it's tomorrow i'm recording this monday so that's on tuesday it'll be on the draft kings youtube channel so go check that out it's always a good time when i get to chat with pat all right this week the pga championship the 100th edition this will be played at bell reeve which uh, actually kind of a little bit different of a course. It might not be as long as some of our other PGA Championship venues. Um, there's going to be holes with some dog legs. So I actually do think that while driving distance is always important, it is not going to be as important this week. Um, some of the shorter hitters are getting back into play a little bit. Um, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the cheat sheet. All right, this cheat sheet, along with everything you see in this video, it is available on DFSOnDemand.com if you want to check it out. So, obviously a star-studded field at the PGA Championship this week. No shortage of big names. Pricing is always a little bit softer on DraftKings when it comes to major weeks. So, we have plenty of options. Um, with that being said, it's, it's almost a little uh, easier to, to roster some of these big names because there's going to be values down the board. Um, so, let's talk about the over 10k guys right it's dj rory spieth and fowler um there is unfortunately an odd man out here and it's it's jordan spieth you know i i don't need to continue to discuss his struggles this year um i i'm obviously a believer long term i think that um i, I will likely be on him more than others are when he finally does pop off and win again but uh in any format where you're looking for a safe golfer you certainly could not be rostering Jordan Spieth this week. Uh, he's now relegated to only GPPs, and you really don't have to have that much of him to be overweight. So if he's a single-digit ownership type guy this week, I think he was, what, 10% at the WGC last week in, a, in half the size of the field. Um, he's probably going to be that, that or lower again this week, which means you only really have to have him in you know two out of 20 lineups to probably be overweight on him. So um, I think that's interesting, but there's, there's two guys that, that reign supreme. Um, Dustin Johnson, who, uh, even on his worst weeks, finds a way to like, you know, s storm up the leaderboards on Sunday last week at the WGC and finish third, right? The win at the, at the RBC the week before that. And he is the betting favorite again this week. And then you have Rory McIlroy, who, you know, is in no short shortage of form coming in, um, compared to some of these other guys, right? He's got four straight top 12 finishes, including a second place at the open championship, or I'm sorry, three straight. I'm looking at his odds are 12 to one. That's not a 12th place. So a sixth at the WGC, a second at the open championship and a 12th at the travelers. And Oh yeah, by the way, um, he's hoisted the Wanamaker trophy twice. Um, every PGA championship course just seems to fit his eye and, and, you know, every course in the world seems to. Um, so those are the two that are going to concentrate ownership. I'm, I'm actually probably more lukewarm on Ricky Fowler than most, um, even with what we would describe as kind of like a disappointing run here. I mean, what's the disappointment? You know, no worse than 28th in any of his last seven starts. And he has uh, two top fives in his last four years at the PGA. So I think those guys kind of kind of play themselves. Um, Tiger kind of did what we what we'd worried about where, you know, he just doesn't make enough birdies to contend. Um, at the WGC after playing really two two really good rounds to start the week. And he's always capable of hitting that eject button, um, which is a little bit concerning. Just absolutely fades on Sunday, um, falls to 31st, and, and now getting a course where, um, you know, I, I don't know how dri how relevant driver is going to be this week, but, but Tiger lost strokes a lot of different ways on Sunday, um, which has me at pause considering this pricing came out um, before last week, right? This pricing came out right after that sixth, play, you know, coming off that sixth place at the Open Championship, um, knowing it's a major week and, and DK priced him up. So I, I just don't know if there's a lot of value in Tiger at 9,900. Um, the next range of guys, and I don't want to spend too much time at the top, but I think it's worth it. The next three guys um, 
I will be all over. Okay, this is where all the value is, and this is where you benefit from, I guess actually the next four guys too, if you want to throw in Tommy Fleetwood. This is where you benefit from the pricing coming out early. Uh, this pricing came out before Justin Thomas won the WGC. He's now down to 14 to one to win this week. Uh, excellent performance last week, and he's and he's $9,700. Not to mention he's your defending champion. Obviously, a, a different course at the PGA Championship last year, but um, you you can't deny it. And then Brooks Kepka is probably the guy I'll be more most overweight on. We're going to talk a lot about him in a second. Um, I won't waste it all now, but Brooks Kepka setting up. Uh, beautifully for me this week. All right. Who else do we have? Jumping down, I mean, you can find a lot of great course history here. Even someone like uh, a Matsuyama, who I was on pretty heavily last week, you know, a fourth and a fifth the last two years. I guess I should call it tournament history, excuse me. Um, Jason Day, nearly criminally priced at $9,000. Three straight top nines, including a win in the last three PGA Championship starts, a 10th place last week. I mean, just... Uh, really good mid-level value. I don't think I'm going to have to go too low this week to find that great value. Um, you can get it in the 8,000s as well. Phil Mickelson, who you know is going to make a ton of um, a, a ton of a ton of birdies. Patrick Cantlay, who's now has what three straight top 15s, um, four if you count his last what's that five starts. I mean, really, really playing well. You get someone like Tony Finau, who's Price comes up, but we're still not at the level that it needs to be at only eighty one hundred dollars. Um, you know, the the pricing in majors is is uh, pretty egregious. Uh, Mark Leishman, I'll talk about a little bit in a second. And then here we get um, Joaquin Neiman at seventy six hundred dollars. I mean, he's been knocking on the door all season long. This is actually his first time starting a major, um, but he's contended all over the place. You know, he's contended at the Greenbriars, contended at the Memorial, the Fort Worth Invitational. He's been really, really impressive. And when we get to the odds section, you're going to see that his Vegas odds don't really match up with his peers here. Um, you can kind of see it already. He's 66 to 1. Everyone else around him is 100 or 150 to 1 to win this thing. Um, so there's your, your obvious value. You know, you could get Zach Johnson or Keegan. Those are guys that are always in play here. Um, I think Ryan Moore is interesting. I believe we'll talk about him more in a in another section. And then just as we get a little bit lower, um, you know, here's some some Vegas value. Kyle Stanley at seventy one hundred dollars. He's eighty to one. His peers, you know, one fifty two hundred. Uh, second place last week. He's a, a much more volatile option. You can see second place at WGC. Second place at the Memorial. Uh, would not roster him in any safe format, but I think you're just fine in a lot of GPPs. And then let's see here. I thought there was one more pretty deep value. Thorborn Olison, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, third place at WGC. If you saw him running up the leaderboards this weekend, um, your eyes were not deceiving you. And then a 12th place at the Open Championship are the last two starts he's made on the PGA Tour. Again, just odds dictating. Just Las Vegas saying what his chances of winning this event uh, much better than anyone else down here in the $6,700 price range. So um, there's your kind of inherent value. All right, strokes gained. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, we'll start with the DraftKings points gain. So these are guys who are making up DraftKings points on the field. Uh, DJ far and away the leader in this category, but then guys that lead their pricing models or their pricing tiers. It's JT, it's Justin Rose again who... You know, I do think it's somewhat interesting for Rose who withdrew last week when he was very likely going to be chalk. I had him as the cover boy, the thumbnail of this video. I was so excited about him. Withdraws, but withdraws early, right? Um, gives us a lot of time to get him out. No reason to think there's any injury or, or ill effects for this week. It seems like he might have just been wanting to take a week off. Um, assuming he tees it up this week, which I certainly do, you get a nice little discount on him. I think he's $800 cheaper than he was last week. He still matches all the criteria of why we liked him last week. And you can see um, just gaining a ton of DraftKings points on the field along the way. Jason Day, who continues to be overlooked. Um, I don't know what, what else to say about him. And then here, here's like that, that tier that you get here. Um, Grillo was so bad this week, but long-term he's, he's been a little bit better. And you see these guys who are Mickelson, Casey, Keegan, Bradley, uh, Joaquin Neiman, and then Olison again down at the bottom. 
they're leading their tiers in um, DraftKings points gained here. And is there anybody interesting that I want to show you um, in this field as far as DraftKings points gained? Probably not. Let's kick, click Kepka for a second. Um, Kepka's only lost strokes. Now, he hasn't played a ton, but he's only lost strokes. Or I'm sorry. He's only lost DraftKings points to the field once this year. It was at the RBC Canadian Open. Um, I uh, missed the cut. It was that brutal week. Remember, he just absolutely punted it, uh, but has been awesome ever since. If we move to strokes gain, this is where things really start to get interesting. So um, what I like to do is I like to look back at last week, which was the Bridgestone Invitational, and I like to find the guys who gained a ton of strokes um, but lost them in certain areas. So we've talked about this before, and, and strokes gain putting is really the one I'm interested in. So Brooks Kepka, fifth most strokes gained on the field last week, 2.16 on average per round. Um, lost a half a stroke putting per round. And I think that's important because he was able to overcome those putting woes to still finish in a top 10 here. And that tells me there's a lot of upside, right? Because he usually averages around a quarter of a stroke putting on the positive side. So even if he just kind of regresses back to, or I should say normalizes back to his average, you're talking about, Basically three tenths of a or, uh, three quarters of a stroke, excuse me, um, for each round. Okay, so that might be a three-stroke swing back into uh, Brooks Kepka's favor, which is obviously some you know napkin math there. But what I'm trying to point out is there is plenty of upside still still to be achieved, right? For a guy who's already won a major this year. The next guy who lost strokes. Um, but gains them, the, you know, if we sort by the, the most strokes gained and then, you know, find the first couple guys who lost strokes, um, Leishman's the next one. Leishman is another guy who usually gains about a quarter of a stroke on, uh, on the greens per round, lost slightly over half a stroke. So very, very similar boat, boat as Brooks Kepka, and he's much cheaper. Okay. So I, when I was doing the research here, I kind of talked myself into, um, into Mark Leishman. Because he's priced at only $7,800. Only $7,800 for a guy who has won tough events before. Um, what do you win? The Arnold Palmer Invitational this year, right? I don't have it on my cheat sheet, but I'm pretty sure that's where he, where he got his W. A 14th at the WGC. He had a 13th at the Quicken Loans and a second at the, uh, I believe that's the Byron Nelson. So he's been more volatile, right? He's mixed in a couple of 45ths and 60s and one missed cut in there. But, you know, he's got upside at 7800 bucks. Played really well last week. And then if you look at his PGA Championship uh, history, 13th place last year, 12th in 2013, and he's only missed the cut once in the last six times he's teed it up there. So um, I think that's a pretty good value that you would not have gotten if the pricing came out after the WGC. I think he would have been at least a few hundred dollars more expensive. And then if we look at um, the last 20 weeks, I think there are um, some more interesting plays here. So we've got the last 20 weeks, I've, I've got the strokes gain numbers piled up here. Um, despite his implosion on Sunday, Ian Poulter still gaining the fourth most strokes total in this field over the last 20 weeks. He's only $7,400. That's really, really cheap. The other guys are, are Dustin Johnson, uh, Thorborn Olison, who only has four rounds, so you can kind of throw that out the window, and Justin Rose. You know, he has got he's, he's he's earning or he's gaining more strokes than Jason Day here, who's who's fifth on this list. So uh, Poulter's just one of these guys who I, I think he's he's just generally disliked by the public, so his ownership is always pretty low. The implosion last week probably hurts, uh, especially for the guys that did roster him last week. Should probably going to drive that ownership down. And he's only $7,400. Um, I want to also do T to green here because I think that's going to be very important this week. So just looking at the T to green numbers, these are a lot more of your uh, bigger names, right? You've got Dustin Johnson, Justin Rose, John Rahm, Francesco Molinari, and Rory McIlroy are the top five. Those are, those are big time names, guys, that you probably could have guessed are playing pretty well right now. Then you get Patrick Cantlay, who um, you know has been one of our DFS sweethearts for a while. But when you get into a major championship 
where you get a lot of more public money. You know, I wonder how popular he will be. And then actually right after that, ahead of Stenson, ahead of Thomas, ahead of Joaquin Neiman is Ryan Moore, a guy that I probably hadn't considered only $7,400. Um, two of his last three starts have been a 12th and a 13th. He added another 13th, a few starts before that. Um, a 13th again, Jesus, that had a lucky number for him um, last year at the PGA Championship. So Ryan Moore gaining a lot of strokes all over the place. Um, let's see if I can go back to him here. He's losing them on the putting greens, but it's what we've talked about before. You know, a Keegan Bradley, a Lucas Glover, um, someone who can't putt <laughs> can get hot and win a PGA Championship, which is what we've seen. Ryan Moore at $7,400 doing everything at a really elite level. Um, besides putting is, is somewhat interesting. And I, and I never consider Ryan more. All right. And since we get a lot of rotational courses, you know, it's, it's hard to look at course history in majors. Um, so what I like to do is I kind of just, I like to lump them all together, which is what I've done on the visual here. I, I've just lumped, you know, literally since 2008, I've lumped all the majors together. Okay. Um, and said, so basically give me guys who play well in big events, big money events, um, usually very difficult courses or, or different setups. Just give me those guys. Um, so what we find is that with 19 starts, which is a lot, it's a lot of starts, um, Brooks Kepka is actually the number one guy in DraftKings points um, on average in these events. Uh, 68 and a half DraftKings points. It's more than the next few guys who are Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, and Jason Day. Um, that's obviously very impressive. You know, then you get a, a little of the, the small sample guys. Xander Shoffley is uh, sixth on this list. Uh, Tony Finau is eighth on this list. Uh, Shoffley has only, has only started six majors. Finau has only started 10, but really good success in those first few starts. So again, I'm just kind of trying to show again, like everything I put in here, Kepka is continuing to pop off the model. Um, which is just su super impressive. And I'm, I'm going to have quite a bit of him at whatever his price tag is, 90, 90, whatever, 100. And then as far as the correlating stats, probably won't spend as much time on it um, this week as we do most weeks because of that rotation, right? So just looking at PGA Championships, a different course every year. Um, Bell Reeve actually probably is one of the further from a traditional PGA Championship course but there are still some stats that correlate across the board. Um, SDFA, always going to be important in these very difficult fields. And, and what I'm showing on the screen here I think is really interesting, and it shows how deep this field is. Five of the top six guys in SDFA, uh, strokes differential field average, are under 10,000. It's DJ and then five guys between 8,700 and 9,400. It's Justin Rose, Jason Day, Justin Thomas, Henrik Stenson, and Tommy Finau. Then the next guy is Rory McIlroy, 11,000 bucks. So that shows you how deep this field is. I will probably probably be stocking up on as many of these mid eight, $9,000 guys as I can possibly get into my lineup, try to get as many combinations as I can and um, see how that plays out. Then we always have the birdier better numbers, the par four numbers when it comes to a um, par 70. Strokes gained off the tee, that always elicits some interesting guys here. Gary Woodland, who's played better recently, um, is fifth on this list. Bubba Watson, who finally made a cut last week, is fourth on this list. Our friend Luke List, who is actually, um, do I have time to go back to Luke List here? Let's see if I can find him. Luke List, last 20 weeks, strokes gained off the tee. He is basically like 11th or 12th in this field. Um, really, really good. He always kind of pops off on models. Yes, he cannot putt, uh, but hey, again, Keegan's won here or won this tournament before. Lucas Glover's won this tournament before. Those guys can't putt either. So um, it's probably the best stretch of strokes gained that List has been through in probably his career. Um, so I, I thought it was worthy to point it out. Um, and then driving distance popped up. So, you know, it's it's funny, right? We, we know driving distance is always going to be a benefit. Um, or an advantage, but it doesn't always pop up on the model. And this week it did. And I don't think Bell Reeve requires the distance, especially with some dog legs. You might have to lay back and, you know, just hit, you know, three iron off the tee or something like that. But um, it was it was important for me to, to show it here because it is rare that it pops up. Uh, Rory leads the way in this category. Then you do get, 
you know, Finau, Luke List, and Dustin Johnson. So it, it, it is the guys that you expect it to be. But I thought it was worth mentioning here because of how rare it is. Okay. Let's head back to the cheat sheet and wrap this up with the Vegas odds. And I misclick. Let me just do it this way. So we kind of talked about a few of them, but it's essential. It's especially important this week because the pricing did come out so early. Um, Jordan Spieth priced at 20 to one kind of stinks because you can get Brooks Kepka, who's the same odds to win for $1,100 cheaper. You can get Jason Day, who is the same odds to win for $1,700 cheaper. And you can get, there's somebody else, I thought. Maybe not. Maybe those are the guys I'm looking for. Oh, and Justin Thomas, who is 14 to 1, much better odds to win for $1,000 cheaper. So if you're playing strictly Vegas value, you really can't roster Jordan Spieth here. Um, okay, so I mentioned the other values there. Uh, Patrick Reed also, you know, 35 to 1 at $8,900. Uh, there's a couple guys below him, like Matsuyama at $8,800. Stenson and Norin at 87 and 86. Those guys are 50 or 66 to 1 to win. Patrick Reed's 35 to 1 to win. Um, Sergio, who has ejected himself from uh, a few tournaments in a row now, didn't really show up at the WGC. He's 100 to 1 to win. Man, I know it's been a bad stretch for him, but that's a shocking number to see next to Sergio. Phil Mickelson also with that same price. Also kind of shocking to see that next to his name. When guys in the similar price range are, you know, can't lay at 50 to 1, Xander at 50 to 1, and Tony at 40 to 1. So, um, kind of a surprise there. Mentioned Leishman at 66 to 1. His peers are, uh, you know, either 100 to 1, 80 to 1, 75 to 1. Uh, mentioned Joaquin Neiman. He gets a little bit of value there. Who else? Uh, mentioned Kyle Stanley, 80 to 1, when, you know, Jamie Lovemark and Luke List and Russell Knox are all the same price. And they're either, you know, 150 or 200 to one to win this event. And then uh, Olsen's probably the last guy, right? So he's 75 to one. His peers have are, you know, 200 or 250 to one to win this event. So there you go. That's it. It's the PGA Championship. It's the last major of the year. I'm super stoked for it. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Again, it's available on uh, now iTunes in podcast form. It's available on Spotify. I will be on the Pat Mayo Hour, Pat Mayo Experience, sorry, Pat, um, on Tuesday. If you want me to ask Pat anything, tweet me. We can mess with him. Tweet me. It's at DFS On Demand or leave a comment below. I'll see you over there, and I'll see you later. Good luck.